praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We we'll rejoice and be glad. Today we're sharing on breaking limitations by the Spirit. It's going to be by the Holy Ghost that limitations will be broken. And uh, God has a great plan for us. This is part of our 30 days fast and prayer teaching section. And uh, I want to appreciate everyone who have been connected to us for these 30 days. And today is day 28. And we'll be rounding up by Monday. The fast will be over. And we have a lot of programs lined up. We have just started a school of miracles, signs, and wonders. We have the school of apostles coming up. We have the school of prophets coming up. And we have today's CEOs. That's a business school to help people. So, we have a lot coming up. I'm just replying a, a text message I received. Someone asked, Apostle, will you still continue teaching after you're done with the 90 days of glory? Because a lot of people were worried and they were feeling maybe I'm going to be leaving the scope. Maybe because of after the 90 days of glory. No, I'm not leaving the scope. I'm not walking away. I can't leave you halfway. <laughs> It's not good that I've roused your appetite for a good word and now walk away. No. So I'm answering the question people are asking. Are you going to continue to teach? Yes, I will continue to teach. I will continue to teach every day. You should expect at least four to five scopes. Minimum of three scopes. Maximum of four, five scopes every day. So as the Lord provide for me and inspire me. So the School of Apostles is coming up next week. The School of Prophet is coming on. Coming up CO today is coming up. So a lot of things are going to happen. So you have so much of benefit. So we encourage you to partner with us. It's through partnership I'll be able to pay for all of these to keep streaming them for you. So, so that's why you have to partner. Because when you partner, the finances to keep doing it will be available. So through partnership, we're able to host all the classes, all the schools. We're not asking people to pay us. We're only asking partner. The Lord told me, be generous with my word. That is what the Lord said to me. He told me, be generous with my word. So I'm just trying to make all of this clear to people today that the classes will continue and, uh, and uh, partnership is required as we can be able to reach more people. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Now, today we're going to, our teaching will be, uh, we, we have to, we're talking about breaking limitations by the spirits. Limitations can be likened to be strongholds that exist in our mind or in our lives that resist us from reaching our full potential, breaking limitations, breaking limitation. Limitation can be likened to a stronghold that exists in our mind that keeps us away from reaching our full potential. A limitation also can be likened to a way of thinking that is not consistent with God's will. It creates a limitation. A limitation can be likened to words spoken over a person. You know, sometimes Words could place limit on people's lives. They call it a curse. Words could place limit on people's life. 
they are trying to make, they are trying to advance, but what has spoken over them that keeps them away from reaching their full potential. So, limitation can also be likened to viewing your life from a wrong perspective. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm going to answer all of those questions. I'm going to ask how we'll find out the root cause to our problems. Some problems have a demonic connection. And some problems comes from a spoken word. A spoken word, a way of thinking. You see, your words create atmosphere. Your thinking can create a problem because thinking creates action. Action is a product of thinking. Action is a product of thinking. So your thinking can create action. And if the action is not consistent with God's word, it has the pot- it will have the potential to destroy your great future. So limitation, there is what is called self-imposed limitation. And self-imposed limitation comes from a way of thinking, comes from the mentality in which we live our lives. There is a positive mentality, there is a negative mentality, there is a mentality of rejection. There is a mentality of rejection. There is a mentality. There is a demonic mentality. A way of thinking that brings a reproach. There is a way an individual thinks and they bring a reproach to their lives. There is a way of thinking that brings a reproach. So God doesn't want me to think in that direction. Breaking limitations begin with recognizing the limitation. Why am I been going through this situation? Why am I going through these circumstances? Why is this situation here? So I have to check my way of thinking. If my way of thinking is not consistent with God's word, there is a limitation that comes from that thinking. In 2 Kings chapter 7, 2 Kings chapter 7, if you read through it from verse 1 to 20, you will notice that there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gates. And they said to one another, Why sit we here until we die? There was a limitation. They couldn't go forward. They couldn't go backward. Until there was a decision to break out from that limitation. Breaking a limitation begins with making a decision to believe God's word. Breaking a limitation begins with a decision. Breaking a limitation begins with a decision to live according to God's word. When you make the decision to function according to God's word, that is number one key 
to breaking limitation. The scripture said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. He said, with God, all things are possible. With God, healing is possible. With God, deliverance is possible. With God, signs and wonder is possible. He said, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. And whatever God is calling you to do is based on his word. So if I want to break a limitation, I have to think from the direction of God's word. Making the word of God the standard for my life. So limitations are subject to the integrity of God's word. Limitations are subject to the integrity of God's word. So if you want to break a limitation, you want to break a limitation, is by you speaking that word, doing application of scriptures doing application of scriptures is it when we do application of scriptures that is the key to breaking limitation in john gospel chapter 8 jesus said verse 32 he said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free it is the application of the truth that guarantees liberty. It is the application of the truth that guarantees liberty. If I want to see liberty in any aspect of my life, all I have to do is to apply God's word to that very area. If I apply God's word to that area of my life, then the limitation will be broken. You break limitation by the application of scriptures. Now, James was writing, James chapter 1, James said that the doers of the word is blessed. Who is blessed? The man who do the word, not just hearing, but doing of the word. The application of God's word is what guarantees supernatural transformation. If we want to see supernatural transformation concerning our finances, concerning our relationship, concerning any aspect of our life, it is by the application of God's word. In John Gospel chapter 8 verse 30, St. John Gospel 8 verse 30, and Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you will be my disciples indeed. He was talking to those Jews. He said, if you continue in my word, you will be my disciples indeed. So we are called into continuity in the word. We have to continue in the word of God. And Continuity in God's word is what guarantees supernatural deliverance, supernatural protection, supernatural provision, supernatural open door, supernatural blessing. When you continue in the word, a lot of Christians are looking for solutions outside of God's word. You don't get solution outside of God's word. You get solutions in the word. You don't find solution to your problems outside of God's word. You come to the word. The word of God is a book of solution. And when you read this book by the help of the Spirit, you will receive revelation for transforming your life. If you read this book called the Bible, with the help of the Spirit, you will receive what is called revelation. Revelation is a revealed knowledge. 
Revelation is a revealed knowledge. It is a knowledge that awakens your faith in the direction of the very knowledge you have received. Revelation is a revealed knowledge. So when you read the word of God, the Holy Spirit begins to give you revelation. And revelation knowledge is a superior knowledge, is superior. Revelation knowledge is superior to information. So when you have revelation knowledge, it is a knowledge that activates faith. It is a knowledge that activates your faith to be able to advance in the direction of your expectation. It is a knowledge that activates faith. It is a knowledge that activates faith. So when you have revelation knowledge, revelation knowledge, it stirs you up to release the power of God within you. Every Christian in the body of Christ is powerful. Every Christian in the body of Christ is powerful. But it's not every Christian that function in the consciousness of the power. Every believer in the body of Christ is powerful. But it's not everyone that functions in the consciousness of the power. Because Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give unto you power. The power of God is for today. The power of God. In John Gospel chapter 1 verse 11 to 12. He said some things there. He said he came to his own. His own received not. But as many that believe. To them he gave the power. To become the sons of God. The scripture also established. The index expectation. Of all the creatures. Wait for the manifestations. Of the sons of God. If we are the sons of God. Which we know we are. We need the revelation of our sonship. The revelation of our sonship empowers us to function in the full capacity of who we are. The revelation of our sonship empowers us to function in the full capacity of who we are. We are the sons of God. In sonship, you have inheritance. In sonship, you have authority. In sonship, you have inheritance. In sonship, you have authority. In sonship, you have power. In sonship, you have dominion. In sonship, you have blessing. There is so much that is within our sonship. But lack of revelation knowledge has made us to live like slaves and servants of God. We are supposed to be living like the sons of God. It is in sonship you have inheritance, not in servanthood. Servants don't have inheritance. It's just in some few occasions that servants are given inheritance, but inheritance is for sons. Is for sons of God. And if you are born again, you are calling to sonship. It is a place of inheritance. And when you have the revelation of your sonship, it is an indication that you can enforce your dominion. When you have the revelation of your sonship, it is an indication that you can enforce your dominion. So limitations are broken when we have the revelation of who we are. One of you know in Matthew Gospel, uh, Matthew chapter four, Jesus was sharing 
when Jesus was done with his fasting and prayer, and Satan came to Jesus and said to him, If you know you are the Son of God, turn the stones into bread. If you know you are the Son of God, turn the stones into bread. Because Jesus was hungry. So the devil was telling Jesus, If you know you are the Son of God, turn the stones into bread. And Jesus said, It is written, Matthew chapter 4, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. You see, Jesus have a revelation. Revelation is an answer to a question. Revelation of God's word is the answer to the question. So when you have revelation knowledge, you have resources for dealing with limitations and situations. When you have revelation knowledge, you have resources for dealing with situations and limitation. We get revelation knowledge when we begin to study God's word then the Spirit of God quickens the Word of God in our spirit. When you begin to read your Bible, you have to study your Bible. You have to read your Bible. Second Timothy 2.15 In Second Timothy 2.15, Paul was writing to Timothy. He said, study to show yourself approved to God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. He said, study. Because when you study, it empowers you to flow in power. Because revelation knowledge helps to stir up the gift of God that is within you. It stirs up the anointing. One of the ways the anointing can be stirred up is when we feed on God's word. One of the ways... You can stay up the anointing is when you consistently feed on the word of God. So the more you feed on God's word, you are energized to flow in power. You are energized to see miracles. So the word of God in Hebrews 4 verse 12. No, in, in Hebrews 4 verse 12, it said the word of God is quick, is powerful. Is sharper than two edged sword. So God's word has the ability to break limitations. It has the ability to break limitations. So it doesn't matter what the situation is. That was why Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, from verse 20 to 22, when Peter was calling to remembrance, and Jesus said, If you can say to this mountain, what do you say to the mountain? Not just your word, but the word of God. The mountain responds to God's word. The mountain responds to God's word. He doesn't respond to just to, to ordinary words. The mountain does not respond to ordinary words. It responds to the word of God that flows from your mouth. When God's word flows out of your mouth, it has the same ability like when God said it. So if the mountain, a mountain, can be likened to a limitation, a mountain can be likened to a situation, to a limitation. So if you speak God's word to the situation, the situation we hear. Can I say this to you? Every situation is subject to the integrity of God's word. Every situation. So it takes the revelation of God's word to deal with situations. It takes it. If you truly want to prosper, if you truly want to succeed, if you truly want to excel, you need the revelation of your sonship. You need the revelation of the will of God. You need the revelation of your authority. You need the revelation of the will of God. What is the will of God for my life? 
what is God's will for my life. Knowing God's will for your life helps you to cultivate confidence. It helps you to do what? To cultivate confidence. Having the revelation of your sonship. Knowing who you are in Christ. Knowing what you have in Christ. And knowing what you can do with the Christ in you. You got to know it. Know who you are in Christ. Know what you have in Christ. And know what you can do with the Christ in you. Because Christ dwells in you. He's the source of liberty. He's the source of authority. He's the source of power. He's the source of dominion. He's the source of strength. He is the source of your blessing. He is the source of wisdom. He is the source of understanding. He is the source of revelation knowledge. So when you have the revelation of the Christ in you, you rise beyond every limitation, beyond every opposition. This is how you break limitation. Whether you say a financial limitation, emotional limitation, spiritual limitation, it doesn't matter what the limitation is. It doesn't really matter. If you have the revelation of God's word in your spirit, it is the foundation for changing things. We change things by the application of revelation knowledge. That's how you change things. And God said in Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 to 3, you know, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness was upon the face of the earth. Darkness was everywhere. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. He spoke the solution to the situation. Let there be light. That is what to say. Speak the word. That is how the spirit quickens you. That is how the spirit helps you by speaking the word. Not by shedding tears. Not by worrying. Worrying doesn't solve your problem. When you worry, you don't solve the problem. You solve the problem by speaking the word of God. Worry does not change anything. Worry can only compound your problem. Speak solution. Don't speak the problem. Speak solution to the problem. That is how you change the situation. That is how you break the limitation. When you speak God's word, you are releasing God's influence over the situation. You have to put God's word in your spirit. A lot of Christians don't have time to read the Bible. You have to read it. You have to believe it. You have to speak it. You have to read it. You have to believe it. You have to say it. God's word has the potential to bring a shift into the atmosphere of your life. The solution is in the word. The answer to this problem, to this demonic experience, this satanic harassment, get into the word. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Because if you have the word in you richly, you can produce a great result. The word in your spirit will cause a revolution around your situation. The word in your spirit will cause a revolution, a change around you. And right now God's word is coming to you. Expect a miracle. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command every limitation to be broken. Every limitation around them. Financial limitation. Relational limitation. Whatever the limitations are, I command it to be broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to God. You're welcome. This is all we can do for today for you concerning the fast and the time of prayer. And uh, we encourage people to always go to our YouTube channel. Is Faith Man Teaching on the YouTube. Go there and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And we encourage you to share the videos on the YouTube. Share it everywhere. You have the permission from me to share the video, to use them to teach. Use them to encourage other believers. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead sharing God's word everywhere. We have a vision to reach one billion people before Jesus will come. From your nation, from my nation, from everywhere around the world, begin to share the videos. If these messages are blessing you, don't just be the only one listening to it. Yes, yes, Kim is saying this is great for Bible studies. Yes, let's use it. I was, uh, okay, okay. So let's use it. Let's use the, the message. Let's, 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 let's share it in our churches. Let's send it to your pastors. Send it to your friends. Send it to everywhere. Use it for your teachings. We're encouraging people to share these messages on on the YouTube, on Periscope, on the tweet. Go everywhere and share it. Tell people about it. And this is how we are going to change the nation. So, the School of Apostles are coming up. The School of Prophet is coming up. And CEOs today is also coming up. So, we encourage you to partner. Through partnership, we'll be able to do all of these things we are talking about here. The School of Apostles, the School of Prophets, CEOs today, the School of Miracle Signs and Wonders have already started. So today will be class three of the School of Miracles, Signs and Wonder. It's going to be life changing. Someone said, I, I have to reach on transforming. Okay, yes, let's reach more people. Let's talk to more people. So I want you to use your PayPal today and be a blessing. So we see to support this class is coming up. It's a huge project, but I trust God to provide for all of the classes that are coming up. So we encourage you to partner with us and through partnership we'll be able to continue to extend our voice around the world where people are listening to us in Netherlands, in Australia, in Canada, in Kenya, in every part of the world. This message is reaching people. It's reaching them in Russia. Is reaching them in Canada, is reaching them in California, is reaching them in Texas, is reaching them in Netherlands, is reaching them in Canada, everywhere. Africa is just going. So the, the list is so much. So people have been watching me from nations I've not mentioned. They are watching from Brazil. So we encourage you to keep your partnership with us as this message continues to go around the world every day, helping people solving their problems. So partner with us. Is Fitman Teaching on Gmail, Fitman Teaching at gmail.com. And uh, you can also use MoneyGram if you want a bank transfer. We can also send the information to do a bank transfer. We love you. Looking forward to seeing you on our, net bro our next broadcast. Don't forget that there is greatness in you and you can make big things to happen in this generation. Love you. Until I see you again, don't forget, you're blessed.